Hello friends, this video on data handling part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we learned about organizing data, that is how can we better organize data so that interpretation becomes easier. Now we will learn about representation of data. How better can we represent data? Now there are many ways of representing data. The first way that we will learn about is pictograph. Picto is derived from the word picture. So we will make use of pictures here. So pictorial representation of data with pictures. So let us take an example. So let us say that this is a class of 500 students. So total 500 students are there in the class. And the teacher asked the kids what is their favorite fruit. Okay. Now let us say that 50 students told that they like apple. Whereas 100 of them said that they like mango. Some 250 students agreed that grapes is their favorite fruit. Whereas 100 students opted for orange. So this was the observation. So this is the data which is given to us and we have to represent this data using pictograph or using pictures. So how do we represent it using pictures? So one good way of representing this data with pictures is that what we do is we say that apple is liked by this picture. So what does this picture mean? So does this picture which shows one person, does that mean that apple is liked by one person? No. So what we assume is that let's say that one such symbol represents 50 people. So that this shows that apple is liked by 50 people. So how many people like mango? Mango is liked by 100 people. Now one symbol represents 50. So how many symbols would represent 100? 100 divided by 50 which is 2. Therefore two such symbols would be 50 plus 50 that is 100. So mango is liked by 100 people. Now can you tell me what about grapes? 250 people. So how many symbols do we need to represent the number of people liking grapes? 250 divided by 50 which is 5. So for grapes you would have 5. And the last one that is orange again 100. So for orange again you would have two symbols. So you see with the help of pictures. So here nowhere you wrote 50 or 100 or 250. You just made use of this picture to represent this entire set of data. So this is an example of pictograph and that is why it is called pictograph because, because it makes use of pictures. But the beautiful thing here is that instead of drawing now if I ask you to draw some 50 pictures like this. So that's going to be irrelevant and time consuming. So therefore we do this that is we assume that let's say that one this one picture represents 50 people now here i said 50 now in case you are dealing with thousands you can even say that one picture represents thousand people and so on so let us take an example of pictograph so here we have the favorite subjects list in which we have maths physics and chemistry as options so let's say that in a class, in your class, let's assume that the teacher asked what, which is your favorite subject. So some students opted for math, some for physics and some for chemistry. So now we have drawn a pictograph depending on whatever the students responded. And the pictograph looks somewhat like this. This is how the pictograph looks. And the pictograph also states that one symbol represents 100 students. So can you tell me how many students like maths? So 100 plus 100 plus 100 or you can say 3 times 100, 3 into 100, that is 300. So 300 students favorite subject is maths. Similarly, how many students like physics? 2 into 100, that is 200 students opted for physics and 5 into 100, that is 500 students liked chemistry. Now, if I ask you which subject is liked by most of the students, now even before doing these calculations, just by looking at the pictograph only, you can say that chemistry is the one which is liked by most because you have more pictures for chemistry. If we ask you how many like physics, then you can say since you have two pictures, so 200 people like physics. So you see looking at the pictograph, this is how we can interpret a pictograph. This is how we can fetch information from a pictograph. 
So let us now see how do we interpret pictographs. So here on the screen we have a pictograph where, which shows favorite color versus number of people. So here we have four different colors, blue, green, red and white and we see how many people like each of these colors. Now here, even before we start interpreting the pictograph, let me clearly tell that here we have assumed that let each of these symbol represent 10 people. So that is, that is something which we have already assumed. Now let's proceed with this assumption. So now, can you tell me looking at this graph, looking at this pictograph rather, that how many people like blue color? So how many pictures do you have? One, two, three, four and five. So basically five into 10 because each picture represents 10 people. So blue color is liked by 50 people. What about green? So here you have three pictures. So that means green color is liked by three into 10. That is 30 people. What about red? Here one, two, three, four, five. And the last one is not full. It is like only half of the picture. So basically one, two, three, four, five. So five full, which is five into 10 plus one is half. So half means not 10 people, but half of 10 people, which is five people. So this would be 50 plus five, that is 55. So 55 people say that red is their favorite color. What about white? You have two pictures. So that means two into 10, that is 20 people like white. So now looking at this pictograph, if I ask you, which is the favorite color for maximum number of people? So for maximum number of people, 55 is the maximum number of people who likes red color. So red is liked by most of the people. Which is that color which is liked by very few people? So that's nothing but white because only 20 people like white. So white is the least liked color. So in this fashion, we can interpret pictographs. So in pictograph, pictograph, it is very important that you very observe very closely that what each of this picture represent. Like here, it represented 10 people. And then you have to observe very carefully that how many such pictures you have for each data. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.